Today on Beers TV, we're going to talk granular ferric oxide. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beerus TV, where each week we cover a new topic related to reefing. This week we're going to explore one of the most common filtration medias in the saltwater aquarium world, granular ferric oxide, often referred to as GFO. We'll share why reefers use it, how they use it, the different types, and when to replace it. GFO is capable of removing a wide range of impurities from the aquarium, but the primary one, the reason everyone uses it is because it's very efficient at removing phosphate. Phosphate is almost always a concern for reefers because we had a substantial amount via fish and coral foods and for some reefers they're a source of fresh water for top off and water changes. Phosphate is closely related to protein so there's really no such thing as a nutritionally complete food that's low in phosphate. The only way to control it is by limiting how much we add with our foods and water source and then removing it with a filtration media or other methods. Water changes alone very frequently are not enough to maintain ultra low phosphate levels. The most common method by far is probably GFO because it's time tested by tens of thousands of reefers for at least a decade, super easy to use and pretty inexpensive expensive. There are two major reasons why reefers are concerned about phosphate. The first one most people are already familiar with, which is algae control. Phosphate plays a critical role in the growth of all living things, including algae. GFO allows us an opportunity to lower the phosphate level so low that it actually inhibits the growth of algae. This works extremely well at not only controlling things like hair algae, but also even simple things like drastically reducing the green haze that grows on the glass. There are a few stubborn types of algae which are less responsive, like bryopsis, but generally ultra-low phosphate levels work fantastic at controlling algae growth in the reef tank. The other reasons reefers care about phosphate is because it slows coral growth and calcification. If you've watched any of our calcium and alkalinity videos, you know that LPS and SPS corals grow their skeletal structure by laying down a structure made out of calcium carbonate. Does this by pulling out calcium and carbonate ions from the water and attaching themselves to the existing calcium carbonate structure. What phosphate does is attach itself to the surface and makes it much less attractive to new calcium and carbonate ions and slows growth. I think this is something that's seriously overlooked by most reefers who are spending thousands on lights, additives, and equipment to get additional growth only to have it seriously impacted by phosphate, something that can be solved with a few dollars of GFO. There are multiple ways to use GFO in the tank. Easiest is probably just throw some in a filter bag and throw it in a high flow area of the sump. Well, this is the easiest. It's really not the way I'd recommend using it because it's only going to filter the water that comes in contact with the bag. This might be many days or even weeks before all of the aquarium water does that. Much more common is an inexpensive media reactor which pumps water through the media. By pumping the water through the media, we can ensure that the entire system's water volume passes through the media each day, often multiple times a day. There are a variety of reactors out there, but for the most part, they're all designed to tumble the media. Tumbling prevents the GFO media from solidifying into a big block, which will just clog the reactor. By tumbling, all the tiny little granules stay free of each other. Well, it does look cool. You should note that tumbling doesn't actually make it perform any better. The reason that you make it tumble is to prevent it from turning into a brick. In fact, slower flow with more contact time will help the media work even better. If your reactor has the ability to hold the media securely in place, many reefers will mix the GFO, one-third GFO, with two-thirds carbon, which will help you eliminate the tumbling. Just make sure you don't tumble the GFO in carbon because the GFO is harder than the carbon. It will grind it to dust over time. Our most popular reactor is a BRS reactor. If you're interested, we have an installation video with more complete installation details. A vast majority of the GFO we sell will come in bulk containers with a standard and high capacity. They both work equally well. The high capacity, however, is twice as dense, which means you can use half as much by volume. Use smaller reactors, and the denser material also creates less dusty fines. However, it does cost twice as much. Endgame, the standard GFO, is your best bet for your wallet, but the high capacity does have some unique advantages. Reefers ask us all the time when to change their GFO. It can often last a month or two, but there isn't a one-size-fits-all answer here because everyone has different feeding schedules, and one reefer can easily add five times as much food or phosphate than another, and everyone's water source is different. Best way is just to test. Phosphate test kits are available, often somewhat hard to read the shade of blue they produce. Much more common is the HANA checker with a digital readout. Most reefers are looking for under 0.03 parts per million as a goal. 
Keep in mind, if you're just starting the use of GFO, it will often take more GFO to reduce the already high levels down to acceptable than it will take to maintain your new levels. In fact, since high initial phosphate levels are often found in unison with high nitrate levels, it might be wiser to reduce your phosphate and nitrate levels initially with a series of large water changes and then use the GFO to maintain your new low phosphate levels after. If you do go the water change route, make sure to keep in mind that even a 30% change means that 70% of the phosphate's still in the tank. So it might take a few larger changes a few days apart to get them down if you already have high levels now. One last note, I know it doesn't normally end up happening this way for most reefers, but GFO and low phosphates work best as a prevention method to dealing with an algae outbreak. It's 100 times easier to prevent an outbreak than it is to deal with one after the fact. If you do have an outbreak, GFO and low phosphates is often one of the keys to beating it back and getting it under control. We've been consistently releasing new reefing videos every week for many years, so if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because there's lots more to come. If you can't wait, check out that one I mentioned on the BRS reactor, this one on what carbon blocks do, or a sneak peek of some of our customer service tanks. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.